a new and advanced way to treat prostate cancer and lessen the side effects. Joining us here to explain more is the Chief of Robotics and Minimally Invasive Surgery at the Mount Sinai Medical Center, Dr. David Samadhi. Welcome, sir. Good morning. How are you guys? Nice to see you. You've been doing this robotic surgery now for how long? It's almost about 10 years, and it's quite interesting because the same interview about 10 years ago was completely different than what we're doing today, and I think we've come a long way. And the whole thought of prostate cancer has changed because we see now more spouses and the wives are getting involved. And it's not just about the cure of prostate cancer, but it's also about the quality of life. Believe me, no man out there wants to be in diapers. They want to have a great sex life. We're also seeing more uh, younger and younger men in their 40s and 50s. So with the advances that we've made with the robotic surgery, we're able to really save their sex life, their urinary control. And, and it's, it's really amazing because, you know, it's all good news for them. Excellent. Before we talk about uh, treatment detection, still the blood test? PSA and the exam, uh, prostate exam, is part of this screening. And uh, we just covered this recently. There was a new study that came out said prostate cancer screening doesn't help, which is absolutely not true. There are shortcomings in some of these studies. So get your blood test at the age of 40 as a baseline and then after 45 once a year. And make sure you follow it, Greg. It's important to know the jump in the blood test. So if you have two normal tests, but there's a big jump. That's a red flag, and you need to see a urologist and make sure you go for biopsy and extra tests. Doc, what's the difference between a robotic surgery and the regular surgery? I know a friend of mine was, you know, kind of weighing both options and actually went to you, and everything went really, really well. But what is the difference for people out there who might be considering it right you now? You know, the traditional open surgery involved making an incision. So you make a cut, and there's a lot of blood loss. If there's blood in the field, you can't really see. So we use our tactile field feedback or touch and that's really not a great science with advances in robotic surgery we're taking the experience from open and laparoscopy and now we use this high-tech remote control uh, robotics in order to be able to see better magnification is much better we can see the nerves much nicer so we don't have to have our hands there and as a result there's no blood loss there's no transfusion and patient can go home earlier and recover is much faster if the cancer is say advanced or, or just particularly bad can surgery still be limited to the robot? That's a really excellent question. The way I use radiation is always after surgery. The best thing is to get the cancer out. You will know how much cancer you have, you know the amount of cancer and the margins. If the cancer ever returns after surgery, you can get radiation. If you get radiation today and the cancer comes back, surgery won't be an option. And that's something that a lot of people don't know and a very important fact to get out. With all this high tech stuff, you know, we always have these glitches. Uh, it breaks down, it stops for a second, to does that ever happen during robotic surgery? It's extremely rare, and, I, and that's why it's not just good to be a technician and be a robotic surgeon. You need to have the foundation of open surgery and laparoscopic surgery, and then use this as just a technology. Just being a technician and being able to use the robotic is not good enough, and that's also another excellent, important point that, that people need to know. Dr. David Samadhi still has good hands, in other <laughs> words. I, why did you shake his hand so hard before? No, I'm, I'm covered well. Was that <laughs> men, men, firm handshake. I know. How Children. Often, how often do you uh, operate? Um, I do about 10 to 15 surgeries a week, and what's important is that I perform the entire operation from the beginning to the end myself. Taking someone's life and also talking to the family, it's a big responsibility that I take it very, very seriously. Yeah, that is, what's the longest surgery you would do It takes the week? about an hour and a half, correct? Uh -huh. They stay in the hospital one night, they go home the next day, the number of days that they have the catheter is minimized, so really we've come a long way. If you have the experience and the team and the volume and a center of excellence, this has really revolutionized the field of prostate cancer. Wow. Dr. David Samadhi, we sit on a couch and chat. You, no, you, you have people li changed, lives yeah. in your hands. He it's amazing. Well, I'm glad that you guys are having an amazing time. I watched you for the past few minutes, and, and it's, it's really think? wonderful. It's a I think, crazy, right? I think it's great. It's wonderful right. that you're just giving the information and having fun at the same oh, time. Terrific. Tell uh, HR that, because Inez is about to file a complaint. I'll make <laughs> <laughs> heckled her during the traffic cast. No, just Thank kidding. you, Doc. Thank Continue you so much for success. having me. Thank nice you. Nice to see you guys.